Hi there, I'm Michael with eTrailer.com. Today we're going to take a quick look at the GoPower PWM Solar Charge Controller. Now a solar charge controller, it's basically going to be the brains of your solar uh, system. So it's going to uh, have the solar panels feed into it and then it's going to uh, continue that power to your batteries. But having this in your system is going to help prevent uh, more power going to your batteries than your batteries can handle. So it's going to help prevent overcharging, which can be uh, very damaging to your batteries. So this is going to allow you to control how much power is going to your batteries and when. Uh, this does work with your 12 volt battery systems and up to 160 watt solar systems. Uh, so it will do a good job if you have a couple of solar panels for your RV so that you can boondock or stay off the grid longer. It will work with the sealed gel, AGM, flooded lead acid, and lithium ion phosphate batteries. So if you have any of those, we'll do a good job for you. This does have the uh, use the digital pulse width modulation or PWM technology that's going to help uh, just give kind of pulses of power to your batteries to make sure that they are going to be uh, constantly charged uh, and not overcharged. You can see this does have a nice backlit digital LCD display that's going to allow you to monitor your current voltage and the state of charge of your bat batteries. Uh, it will allow your batteries uh, to charge in uh, a multi-stage switch that's going to automatically uh, switch between the modes of uh, charging, so bulk mode when you don't have much power in your batteries at all, that's going to fill it up much faster, but then as you get uh, more filled up, it's going to kind of slow that down and just kind of trickle charge it if the battery is mostly full. Uh, but you can then also uh, switch over to the uh, maximum power boost technology at the end of the day. If you're wanting to really get as much power into those batteries as you can, you can switch to that maximum power boost and revert it back to that bulk so that's getting all the power in there that you can for uh, overnight usage. You can see on the front here, it does have the USB port. It's gonna provide an outlet for you to charge small electronic devices like your cell phone, things like that. Um, this will switch off if the battery drops below 11 volts and then it will switch back on again once the battery has reached 12 volts of power just to make sure that all that power is going to uh, necessary functions. Uh, that would cut off, so don't want to have anything super essential plugged into there if your batteries are going to drop below that 11 volt uh, setting. Uh, this is going to mount pretty easily. Uh, it's got four screws here to get it mounted in place. When you're picking out where you're going to mount this, uh, you will want it to be pretty close to your batteries. Uh, you can see on the back side here, we've got our solar in plugs here and then our battery power going out. So solar will come in, put the uh, power into our controller and then that will send the, the power out to our batteries. You do want this pretty close to the batteries um, for the length of wire and uh, just the proximity. Uh, you will want it mounted in the vertical position like it is now uh, to help with the regulating of uh, cooling and all of that. And you will want to make sure that it's mounted indoors. It's not going to be exposed to the elements or anything like that. So keep all that in mind when you're determining where you're going to mount this. Uh, I do want to give you a few measurements to make sure that uh, you have a good plan for where this is going to be mounted for you. This is right at, I'm going to call it five and seven eighths, just shy of six inches wide by about three and seven eighths, to shy of four inches tall. And looking at right at, thinking, let me try and get it this way so you can see better. I'm gonna say that's right at one and a quarter of an inch deep. Now you will need a little opening uh, to get this mounted and that back portion there, but you will also want to make sure that you have enough opening for your cables to uh, connect. So our cutout will be something like 
four and three quarters wide by about, we'll say three inches to be safe there. And then again, uh, whatever your cable length is going to be to uh, make sure that you're not crimping your cable, making too hard of an angle there. Uh, this is going to work with the four C or sorry, MC four cables uh, that probably already came with your solar panels. You will want to make sure that you're using a number four AWG uh, gauge wire to go into your batteries. Um, we do have lots of options here at eTrailer.com to help you with that. So if you don't already have some wires, we have some for you here. Uh, they, they do include instructions to help you with uh, getting everything set up and connected the way it should be so that it will work for you. But overall, just want to stress how important having a controller like this is to make sure that your batteries are going to stay charged the way they're supposed to and prolong the life of your batteries rather than uh, potentially cutting those life spans short. So that's going to complete our look for today. Again, I'm Michael with eTrailer.com. Thanks for watching.